got to keep going. Like, are you just going to give up on your business? Because it happens. It's up and down. down. Yeah. But then, you know what? Next month, you go have a 20% month. Then the following month, you have a 10% month. Then you have a 5% month. Then you have a break even. Whatever the case may be, at the end of the year, all of a sudden, you're up 60% on your money. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. the possibilities are endless. Yeah. Hey Trader, Brittany Hughes here and welcome back to another top tier interview. Before we dive into today's conversation, I want to remind you to subscribe to the top tier YouTube channel because each and every Friday we are dropping new interviews with new guests coming in and at the end of the day, this is for you to gain and extract value to help you on your trading journey. So today's conversation, I feel like we've hosted an entire podcast before we actually started filming. So I'm really excited to continue the conversation um, and to welcome Migs to the top two interviews. Thank you for having me. Yeah, how are you doing today? I'm good, I'm good. Couldn't be better. Yeah, yeah. I like to start out these conversations with giving you your flowers. I know you're a close friend of Q's and a close friend of top tier. And I like to celebrate you and your accomplishments before we even dive into the into the conversation. Thank you, appreciate that. Is there anything trading related, personal life related that you're proud of that you want to share and we can help celebrate you? Actually, um, yeah. So I was always uh, big into fitness. Okay. Skinny kid growing up, everybody was bigger than me. And when I was like 15, I wanted to change that. And I started really getting into fitness. And then that's just been my life, like to this point, like a big part of my life. And when it comes to trading, like everybody that hits me up for trading always ends up asking something about fitness. So I just, um, it's been like two years in the making, but I just uh, released my ebook. Nice. And it's pretty much like a fitness Bible. So like, you know, personal training is expensive. Not everybody has a ton of money to for that. But, you know, if you want to start and you don't know how to start, like it's like 90 days worth of workouts, cardio routines, ab routines, um, tips for eating, diets, like sup what supplements to take. Like pretty much my story and everything you need to know about um, working out is in there. So okay. um, you can find that on uh, manifestbodyx.com. Okay, nice. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Congratulations. I'm excited to, to see what it's all about. Cool. So let's let's just dive right dive right into it. For those individuals who aren't familiar with you, how long have you been trading for? Um, I started trading in twenty eighteen. In twenty eighteen. Yeah. Okay. What was life like for you before you dove into into trading? So before trading, I was like big into the nightlife. So okay. since I was young, I was always like a wild guy, like partying, clubbing, stuff like that. I used to bartend. Um, from there, I got into like promoting kind of like the business side of the nightlife. And mm -hmm. it's pretty much um, what I did for a long time. Uh, it went well. I made a lot of connections there. I'm a very firm believer in your network is your net worth. Mm -hmm. So um, that opened a lot of doors to other things throughout my journey. But, you know, it's like I didn't want to be that guy that's like 40, 50 years old still in the club. You know what I'm saying? So. I was looking for something else to invest my money in and something that I can do uh, outside of that so I can give give that up and I found trading. How are you exposed to trading? I had a friend that was doing it. Okay. And um, I was doing well before that. So like he would talk to me about it, but he was, you know, I don't want to say like he was he he was wasn't doing anything crazy. Like he wasn't anything to doing anything to like catch my attention. Sure. So I didn't really like take it serious like kind of arrogant at the time but probably me thinking like you know like if you were making money and you, you'd show it you know what i'm saying sure. like, like i'm good like i wouldn't pay attention and i know that sounds super shallow it's, but it's really interesting just based off the conversation that we were just having in terms of the the showy and the flashy we'll get into that yeah. but it's interesting that that was your perspective towards him in the beginning whenever you were first exposed yeah no life has taught me some valuable lessons yeah. of judging a book by its cover but sure. anyway um he i just kind of looked at it like that like you know like kind of ignorant like i'm doing better like so why am i gonna take advice from you mm -hmm. very ignorant way to think but that was me i'm not gonna lie and um and then i seen him some time after and i seen him doing well for himself I'm like yo what are you doing and he's like bro i've been telling you this trading thing you know, and then I was like, let me look into it, you know, because I was already looking for something else to do. So I looked into it and it caught my attention, you know, and then um, 
I actually went to this, I found this school because I learned better in person. Okay. So I didn't want to do any of these online things. So I found a school called Online Trading Academy, and they actually had campus. Oh, but, interesting. Um, Where at? They were actually in Natick, Massachusetts. I was living in Boston at the time. Okay. So when I went to this school, um, I sat down for, like, the seminar, and um, I just, everything about them just didn't <laughs> feel right, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I can see through bullshit, and maybe that's just me always being outside, like, mm -hmm. I can read, I can read a room. And I was asking questions that were making them uncomfortable. And I can tell, I was like, I didn't mean to ruffle any feathers, but sure. these are real questions that maybe, I'm very social. I'm, I'm not shy at all. So if I got something on my mind, I'm gonna speak it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of people aren't like that. So I know that there's people here that maybe have certain questions, but they're, they don't have the, they're not brave enough to raise their hand. So I'm going to be that guy to ask for everybody because I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking this. Exactly. So I was asking certain questions, and I noticed that every time I would ask, a, and they were good questions, you want $30,000 from me. Mm. I, you know, I want these questions answered. <laughs> and you ain't got the answers, and you got to think about it. And I'm seeing, you know, how you're reacting. Like, you're getting uncomfortable in asking these questions. So all that stuff was just, re like, red flags to okay. me. Okay. What were they um, teaching? No, it was just basic stuff. Like, they okay. weren't even getting into teaching. They were pretty much selling you on the program. Got right? It. So, like, you know, I'm asking certain questions that, like I said, they didn't like. They thought I was just being a dick. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And eventually it led to me getting kicked out before I could even, like, okay. they didn't even care to take my money. They're like, this guy's going to cost us way more money. Let's just get him out of here. He's asking the right, you know, he's asking he's questions asking. that are going to wake people up. Mm. Oh, interesting. So, all of a sudden, like, the guy is like, you know, I'm not dealing with this shit. I was like, <laughs> like I'm asking a simple question you know he went and got like the director they got me out they were talking to me boom 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 and I they were just like I don't think that this is for you I'm like yeah me neither interesting and then um I had a friend that had told me about uh Q so I looked on Q's uh Instagram and I'm like all right this kid knows he looks like he knows what he's doing I DM'd him was this in 2018? Yeah, this was back like 2018. Okay. 2018 yeah when I DM'd Q it was like 2018 maybe 2019 Around that time. Okay. So I DMQ, I look at his Instagram, and I'm like, all right, this kid looks like he knows what he's doing. Let me hit him up. Let's pick his brain, because I still don't know a lot about the trading, you know what I'm saying, like, mm -hmm. industry. So I DMQ, and he answered right away. And I, and I said, I was, you know, I'm always in Miami anyway, for, like, partying and stuff. So I was like, yo, next time I'm out there, I'd like to pick your brain. If you got time, maybe we could sit down and we can chat, you know, about trading. And then he was like, uh, yeah, sure, just hit me up. So I was like, you know what? I booked a flight, and I went a couple of days later, and we met up, and we spoke for like three hours. Never spoke about trading. Mm. Like, like it was there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Never spoke about trading, and then I still felt like, you know, I had told him I was like, I'm gonna buy his course, and he's like, oh, but you're doing that. Like, I got you. Like, he's helping me out and stuff. Um, I bought his course, and then I was going over it, and I was kind of annoying. <laughs> You know, he probably regretted giving me his number. Because <laughs> like, I was hitting him all the time. I'm like, you, I'm not, I'm not getting this. I'm not getting that. Okay. You know, and then, um, but he, he always picked up. He always helped. And like I said, like our conversation that day was like deep. It was just about, he had just had his daughter. Like it was about life. Mm -hmm. We connected on a lot of things and we never just, we never got to talk about trading because I had to go. So, um, Whatever, we, uh, we became good friends. You know, he actually went up to Boston to visit me. I took him out to the mountains, and, you know, he was a big reason, part of the reason why I moved here, not just the pandemic, but the pandemic was a big reason. My girl wanted to move back to Miami because she's from here. We okay. met out here. Uh, she didn't like Boston. And then um, I knew that, like, and Q was always trying to convince me. Mm. So, like, I knew, like, coming out here, I figured, you know, I'd have him closer. It would help my, my growth. Sure, you're close it, to the fire. Yeah, and, and it definitely did. You know, I got to meet all the other traders. They already saw me hanging out with Q. So when I came out here, like, I met up with a lot of the guys. Everybody kicked it. Everybody was cool. We started hanging out. And then mm -hmm. I got to really understand, like, you know, tr trading and then also the business side of trading and all the things around it. So, so I'd you say learned through Wall Street Academy. Yeah, that was the first course that I actually really, like, learned, like, actually studied and put my time in. Interesting. And I know you said that you're, you're, the way that you best learn is in person. Yeah. Obviously, Wall Street Academy is an, on, an online course. Online. So 
I didn't finish the whole course, like all the webinars and stuff. Sure. But I did enough where I'm very like, like I, I just wanted to get to it, right? So I made like an account and I just started playing with a demo account. And then I said to myself, I'm like, all right, you know, this isn't that hard, hmm. you know, but I still obviously didn't get through the whole course to know like the psychology things, like, you know, risk management, like, like the all concept, that stuff. The con I yeah, yeah, like it's a whole thing. You got to mm -hmm. learn. Mm -hmm. It's just like I started treating it like a video game. Interesting. And I started seeing a lot of blues. So I said, all right, I think I'm ready. So I put uh, 10K to the account. I'd say like several months later, like three months, four months in. And I took 10K to 55K in one month trading uh, GJ. Not GJ, sorry, UJ. Interesting. Um, and I'm not going to say like. At the time, I felt like, oh, like I was born for this. You're hot Like shit. I got to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so I, to be honest, I wasn't using stop losses. I was just scalping. I was just going like, to ask. It was all like, yeah. So like now, obviously that. Beginner's luck, you think? Yeah, beginner's. I'd say somewhat, but I did have a feel for the market. Okay. But I, I'm not going to say like, I'm just, I was that guy off the, like, sure. no, a lot of it was beginner's luck. Um, so I started, I was noticing a lot like Q um ted like a lot of people were trading gold at the time and they were seeing like crazy profits mm -hmm. so here goes me like i just killed a month on uj i'm going to gold like i'm a pro already <laughs> right like i went to gold and on the first I feel like i know how this story might end oh yeah so on the first <laughs> trade um i hit and most of my profits were like 500 600 sometimes okay but like usually in the 500 range okay. i was just scalping um, and I made like 5,000 on gold. And I thought that, you know, I didn't know anything. Like I said, I thought I did, but you know, every payer is different. They react different. They're more volatile, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I started trading gold and the second day I married a trade. I added positions and no stop loss and it was going up. And I was like, what goes up must come down and it's not coming down. <laughs> and there's like $22,000 in drawdown. And I remember calling Q, um, <laughs> and then he's like, "Bro, cut, cut it! Cut like the loss. you got to cut the loss. Like you know, you, like that's just you messed up, you know." Mm -hmm. And I remember like that's when it hit me. I'm like, "This is real. Like you can make money, but you could also lose a lot of money if if you're not serious about it or know how to properly, you know, uh, trade." So for like a week, I really couldn't get back on the market. I was kind of like traumatized. Yeah, I'm, like I'm I, sure. Like I lost all confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. And I went from that month feeling like I'm about to be working on Wall Street <laughs> to like, I'm Jeff. I don't know I'm what Jeff the hell Bezos. I'm doing. Yeah. 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 So like, and then from there, I kind of, I called Q. I'm like, dude, I, I got to go to your in-person class. He was doing like a five-day course. Okay. And um, I think it's okay now because he's not teaching, but I told him I wouldn't say nothing, but... It, at that time, it's he, you know his classes used to sell out like that. So I remember him telling me and saying like this classes sell out, so you gotta like be ready, like maybe have different computers open because like it crashes. Damn. It was crazy. This is like some Jordan sneaker release shit. Yeah, like yeah. when Q was doing these five day courses, it was insane. I never seen anything like it. Interesting. So I remember having my laptop out. I had my girl have her laptop out, <laughs> my phone and her phone. I'm like, yo, just hit buy right away, like as soon as the, the clock, whatever. Mm -hmm. Shit crash. I didn't get in. And I called you Q call and Q I'm up. like, bro, what the, I, I, yo, I did everything, bro. Like, I, I, you know? And then I remember him saying, mix, mix. This is like Q's, this is how he talk. Mix, 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 mix. Chill. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Listen, you're, you're, you're good. Just if anybody asks, you got in, whatever, whatever. And, but he looked out, like I said, we had a good relationship beforehand. So I was super appreciative that he looked out for me in that way. So I booked, awesome. I booked a trip back to Miami. This was in Fort Lauderdale actually. And, um, I did the five day course mm. and, uh, learned a lot, a lot more there, you know, and then, uh, went back, went back to the charts. And then, um, when the pandemic hit in like 2020, obviously like not Miami, like everything was wide open here. But Boston was completely shut down. Like, the only thing that you could do is go to the supermarket or go to the gas station. Mm -hmm. Like, even outside parks, gyms, like, everything was closed. So I had, no, no, like, I had all the time in the world to just keep studying and keep trading. And then um, I was going on, like, live streams with, like, Uncle Ted at the time. And Raja had a live stream going on. Okay, sure. So I learned a little bit more about price action and candlestick analysis through those lives. 
And, you know, I just kind of put it all together, plus my own little style, my own little feel for it over time mm -hmm. and came up with where I'm at now. But Would you say that your trading has evolved from back, oh, from yeah. back then to, to where you are now yeah. in terms of in terms of strategy as well? For sure. Like oh, in all aspects, like mindset, like everything, mm -hmm. like everything. Like before I'd make 300 bucks, 500 bucks. And I was like happy, jump, like killing it, you know? Mm -hmm. And now like I've gone to a point where I just, I don't get too high on my, on my wins and I don't get too low on my losses. I just yeah. try to stay neutral. Tomorrow's another day. You know, if I lose, I'm off the computers. I go to the gym, go with my day like it didn't happen. Maybe later on see, you know, where I went wrong. Sometimes it's not where you went wrong, you know? There's no such thing as, like, 100%, like, strategy. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, yeah. with a good risk to reward, even if you're only successful six out of ten trades, like, you're still going to be on top, right? Even 50-50. Mm -hmm. But, um, so, some, some stra all strategies have losses, you know? Losses are part of trading Naturally. success. Yeah, losses Naturally. are a part of, a trading, uh, of trading success. So, until you can get comfortable with losing, I feel like it's going to be very hard for you to make it in this game so that's such a good that's such a good point what would you say your biggest downfall was though while while you were learning how to trade like what 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 did you have the most difficult time time so, with? was it risk management psychology both okay but a big part of that a big part of that was and i'm gonna take this back to grade school mm. you know your teacher always tell you keep your eyes on your own paper mm -hmm. right so i was always on instagram looking at everybody else Right. And like I said, perception is not always reality. You don't know anybody's journey. Like you're comparing yourself to people who've been doing this for 10 years. Okay. You don't know if they got two million dollars in the account and you're over here trying to flip two thousand, you know, and trying to get the same price. It's not you don't know if like, they're on demo. You don't know if they're on demo. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like there's a lot of factors to it. Sure. So I feel that <clears throat> always being on social media and always like paying attention to what everybody else was doing. It was killing my confidence, you know, um, I, I like it, it was just ruining everything for me. So until like I shut off the noise and just like focused on myself, got my mind right. And um, that's when I started to see like things a little bit more clear mm -hmm. and then start adding like risk management and everything else. But I'd say um, my biggest thing was, yeah, I just couldn't help but to keep comparing my myself not knowing what was really going on on the other side totally i was just q was just in here yesterday and we had an interview and i we were having a conversation he was like i tell people if they're getting started into, started into this don't look at my instagram like yeah. mute mute my stories like it's mute true. my posts because i'm this is year this is year 9 like this is year nine of me working day in and day out consistently. If you want to go to my Instagram page, scroll down all the way to the bottom when I was still pushing carts at Target. Yeah. Like that's where that's where I want you to start from because at the end of the day, that compa the comparison will rob you of your confidence, right? It'll have you thinking that you need to be somewhere else other than where, where you are, which is where you'll actually learn the most. Yeah. And I think that's that's such a big point. And especially in today's day and age in the trading space, everyone's on Instagram. Everyone's flexing on social media. Yeah. And who's to say what's true and false? Social media is a highlight reel. Yeah. Right? People aren't posting. Everybody's happy. Everybody's sure. got the perfect relationship. Everybody's rich. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know what's going on behind that camera. So, like, I feel like social media is just... It definitely like can rob you of a lot of things because you're here comparing everything, you know, from trading to your personal life, everything. And like I said, you don't even know if that's really happening, you know? So like it was a big, big thing for me to get over that, like to get over that hump. And I realized once I did, and that's why sometimes like now with my community and students that I teach, I always tell them that, you know, like, like forget about that because first of all, nine out of 10 things you see, on IG, social media ain't even real, mm -hmm. you know? Second, perception is not always reality. Oftentimes right? it's not. Oftentimes it's not. So it's like, there's a lot of ways to make money around trading and there's nothing wrong with that. Once you actually get into trading and get to know people in the industry, you'll know there's other businesses that still have to do with trading, Sure. but but you're not actually trading, but there's their avenues of income, mm -hmm. right? 
So a lot of us have those, whether it be signal groups, whether it be, you know, prop for whatever the courses, case may be, courses, whatever. Yeah. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that because at the end of the day, like you want to make money and the more money you have, the more money you can put into your account. Sure. And the more that, you know, I trade 1%, I risk 1% per trade. Okay. And that's what I always promote to my academy. But the more that 1%, you know, becomes more. It's like, I don't change anything. Sure. It's just the more money you have, the more that 1% becomes. Exactly. Right. But everything else stays the same. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, making money and, and you, you it's know, it's encouraged. Yeah. I think it's encouraged to make For, more money, <clears throat> to make money outside of trading. So then sure. you can fund your trading. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that there's a misconception where you have, everybody's looking at all these traders and everybody's thinking, that all this is coming from just trading, mm -hmm. right? People don't know the other avenues and other money coming in. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, everybody's, it's their personal privacy, right? You sure. don't have to say how you make money and how many streams of income you have. But the reality is that trading is hard. It's not easy, you know? And, you know, a lot of the things that you see, like I said, didn't come from just trading, mm -hmm. you know? So... Um, that's why I'm like big on just, you know, focus on your journey, focus on where you're at, celebrate your small wins, right? Cause there even came a point where I wouldn't even post my profits because even though to me, like I was leveling up, but I'm only making a thousand bucks at the time. How can I post a thousand dollars and people are already posting, they're making 20, 30, 50,000. So crazy that that's that. That that's the mindset, but understandably, when someone is is flexing and posting what what they have, and you're comparing your yeah. your gains, nonetheless, like you're you're profiting, like that's something to celebrate. You're profiting, and it's big, like yep. So I wouldn't post it because I'm like, how can I post this when mm -hmm. these guys are doing all this, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's like I tell you know my my students, I'm like, you got to po post your little wins because look. Not everybody knows who the bigger guys are, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that follow you that have no idea who we are. Sure. And they're going to be excited about seeing $500, $300 extra a day. Sure. Some people aren't even making that in a week. That changes. That can change someone's life, making an extra Absolutely. $500 uh, a week. Yeah. You know? It's so, exactly. So that's why I tell them, like, don't be embarrassed. Like, you just mm -hmm. started. This is your journey. Be happy about that 500 You were making that a week, and now you just made it in an hour trade. You know? Yeah, you gotta you gotta bring yourself back down because I think there's there's lots of smoke and mirrors, yeah. and I feel really fortunate because I'm I'm in the still in the beginning of of my journey. I'm I'm excited, you know, a few years down the line to be sitting back in this chair, being able to say, yeah, when I was in, I'm, I've been trading for about like a year and a half, going on two years, and my very first mentor, shout out to Nate Williams. He's not in the scene. He's 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 not in the scene at all. And so when I was learning from him, like I was I was strictly just learning from him. And it wasn't until I came to Miami and I went to the very first FX summit, I was like, my my eyes, my eyes got yeah. a bit bigger. I was like, oh shit. Like this is I've I've known that trading is is real and I've seen how it's been able to impact people's lives, like everyday people. And this is this is on a great, like I can also see how it's being done on a bigger scale. On a bigger scale, yeah. And at the end of the day, though, again, going back to my point of $500, an extra $500 a week can change someone's life. I think an extra $500 for me a few years ago, I would have been like, I'm, I've, I'm in a better situation because of it. And so you really have to, especially for the traders who are tuning into this interview, I feel like there's going to be a wide range of, of levels, either people who are just starting their trading journey, maybe they're just trying to get funded, maybe they're one of your students, whatever the case may be, and you just have to recognize like where you're at right now is where you're meant to be at right exactly. now. And to, I deleted my social media for maybe like the first seven months, eight months of this year, of last year, because there was too much noise. The I, noise was loud. I stopped posting. I was posting a lot last year and then I stopped posting and it was nice to see that a lot of people actually looked forward to the post because yeah. people hit me up like you would always post your trades on your story. Sure. And 
you know, some people might see it and just look at the numbers, but then there's other people that really take trading serious and they're like, I'm breaking down they're learning. Your, your trade and I'm seeing where you entered and I'm looking for reasons as to why you did that. And I'm like, you know, like there's people out there that really like, like learn from this and mm -hmm. like really look forward to it. But running like your business, like the outside businesses around trading, mm -hmm. you know, and having to oh, constantly like promote yourself and all this stuff. Like it, it could become overwhelming. Marketing yourself. Yeah, mar yeah, like it becomes overwhelming. Like I don't want to be in front of a camera twenty four seven. Like mm -hmm. I got kids. I got a, I got a real life going on. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's not just, you know, and and I don't feel comfortable sharing every aspect of my life. Like, mm -hmm. so it just came. I kind of felt like I was here and I could be here. And everybody's answer was, you got to post more. You got to be on camera more. You got to do this stuff more. And then I just thought to myself, kind of like, is that really what I want, though? Mm -hmm. You know, like at the cost of what? Exactly. That's going to come at the cost of my peace. And I've worked very hard over the years to be where I'm at right now. And peace is everything. So, like, sometimes, like, even this podcast, like I told you, yeah. I've been invited on several podcasts and I always turn them down. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be the guy in the back. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to be the flashiest. I don't want to be the loudest. Like, I really... Um, appreciate my privacy and 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 my peace that's i mean and i i respect that let's talk about your your community and your you have a course yes what is it called so actually i just uploaded my course on wap.com okay. i'm sure a lot of people are familiar with it sure. so wap w-h-o-p.com slash um, manifest 4x mm -hmm. the number 4x so now um i actually have my course on there for free i've been selling this course for a long time i updated it to like 2024, uh -huh. changed some videos, uh, updated some stuff, and now it's there free. So I have um, a whole team in my Discord as well. So when you get the course, it's like, um, there's a lot of information, like everything you need from like A to Z. Like okay. if you're new to it, if you've been trading, if you're stuck, if you need some help, whatever, it's all there. Um, it's all videos. So and we have a Discord group. So I'm giving my signals away for free. Uh, my course is free. We're doing weekly live webinars. So on Sundays, we do breakdowns for the week. Mm -hmm. And then during the week, we'll do um, updates on those breakdowns and see how those trades are going uh, in a fully active community. Like, that's something that I just actually literally yesterday posted it for the first time on my Instagram. Um, that it's for free? That it's all free. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I always charge for this stuff um, for years. But I just decided to, you know, just give back. I do well for myself. So yeah, um, I don't need it. You know, and I know that there's a lot of people that, you know, could use that, could use that education and maybe they just don't know where to start. They don't have the money to start. Trading is something that um, I'm not saying everybody could do. Obviously, nine out of 10 people fail, you know, but like it's something that you're never going to be my competition. And right. It's it's me versus me and, and me and all of us versus the market. Right. It's so, like mm -hmm. me teaching everybody here how to trade, how to use my strategy and how to make money with me. Like it isn't going to affect my pockets whatsoever sure so why not give back and and help those who you know who want to learn and are not looking for other avenues to of income mm -hmm. i think i hope you start a wave with that honestly with offering the free the free resources because i feel like there was a bubble uh like a course bubble yeah. where everyone and their mother had a course had a course and was trading for maybe, you know, 365 days and on 366, we're like, hey, and now I'm selling my course. No, people that didn't, I've seen people that took my course and, and three months later already came out with a course. <laughs> and I'm like, whatever, to each his own. But well, I, to each their own, but also I'm, I'm, I feel so strongly about, 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 about that. I just feel like it's, you are taking advantage of people who are in a, vulnerable state wanting to learn they see again going back to the smoke and mirrors they see what you're posting they see what you're sharing they, they're taking it in at face value here you are three months later 90 90 days whatever the case may be turning around publishing a course that's exactly why forex has the rep that it has yeah and this is the thing like unfortunately you know there's always going to be scammers right yeah and now with social media you know, it's like it's out there. So it's like, what's what's the buzz? What's selling? Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing Forex. Everybody's doing crypto. Everybody. So now you get all these guys that are like, you know, light bulb goes off and okay, they're not money. in it in the right. They're just looking to make a quick buck. Sure. So it puts a bad light on the uh, on the industry. But, you know, it's real. It's real. And it's been around for a long time. 
-hmm. people just didn't know about it. Yeah. How, let's talk about uh, about prop firms, because I know that you said at the beginning of your journey, 2018, before that, though, you were in the nightlife. You had you had capital to fund a live account. I think you said you put, what, 10, 10 grand, 000, yeah. which majority of people who are getting started in trading don't have. The reason that they're getting started in trading is because they want to make money. They want to make money. Right. And they don't have maybe they don't have 10, 10 grand to fund a live account to to trade on. But now the industry has shifted in what my eyes, it feels like so quickly yeah. in terms of prop firms, of, in terms of prop firms. So do you see it being a, benef a beneficial? Like, do you, do you see it benefiting the industry at large? I do. I do. Because this is the thing. It takes money to make money, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going based on a lot of the DMs that I get. You know, I used to sell my, my, my course for 600 books. You know how many people didn't have six hundred dollars to buy my course? Yeah. So if they don't have six hundred for the education, how are they gonna have money to fund an account, mm -hmm. right? And then there's people that would buy it, and then you know because this is a thing. It's like like we were talking about perception, right? Nobody knows the account size. So somebody could say they made a hundred thousand today, but for all you know, they have ten million in that account, right? They're not showing you how much money's in that account, yep. and that that was only one percent of their of their account mm -hmm. right so here you are and this is another thing that kind of like bothers me like everybody's always promoting flipping accounts i flip this to this i flip this to this or i'm doing an account flip like you are promoting gambling that's not sustainable mm -hmm. if you want to make a career out of this and you really want to make money long term like this can be very rewarding but you're not gonna get there by doing that stuff right flipping accounts it takes people are over leveraging they're not risking properly you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. it's a gambler's mentality. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, the thing is that nobody wants to come in here. If you have $3,000, 1% of $3,000 is 30 bucks. So exciting. you're risking 30 to make 60 to 90 bucks. Like, nobody's coming into trading for 30 bucks, 50, 60 bucks. Yeah. Right? Everybody sees these big numbers and this big lifestyle. That's what they want. Mm -hmm. So pushing that, you know, pushing that account flipping thing and, and creating a bunch of gamblers, it's like, they're gonna over leverage. Again, it's bad it's, for the industry. It is, because they're gonna it's gonna lead to blown accounts. Mm -hmm. Over leveraging. These people are gonna lose their money. And guess what? These people are gonna the average person tells seven people of a great experience or a bad experience, right? Mm. So you go and you listen to so so and so so over there, and you start getting into this flipping account mentality, and you go blow your account. And then now you're over here looking for ways to get more money to do another one because you know you could do it because they did it. And you don't even know if that was a demo account, first of all. Like, there's a lot of things behind that. We're not going to get into that. But still, now all of a sudden, this is your third time trying, and you blew all your accounts, and now you're like, screw this. This is fake. This is bullshit. This is all scam. Mm -hmm. And now you're going around telling everybody that this is a scam, and you got scammed out of it. You didn't, you didn't get scammed. You scammed yourself. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like You got played. You played yourself. You played yourself. Yeah. So, um, well, back to your question. Like, yeah, it's huge because now it gives people an opportunity to actually look forward to the, those type of profits that they're coming into the game for, mm -hmm. right? And then there's all these rules uh, within the prop firm that are going to be beneficial. I know a lot of people don't like it, but, like, those things are preparing you for, you know, a, a good run, like, mm -hmm. to actually good proper risk management, all that stuff. Because if you can't stay within, the, within those parameters, like, you're going to lose. And I tell people, I'd rather go... I always promote the prop firm side of stuff to people because if you can't pass the challenge, then you're not going to do well in a live account. So if you have $10,000 to your name, mm -hmm. I would rather pay 500 bucks for a 100K account that's going to give me the leverage to trade 1%, which is 1,000 to make two, three, 4,000 mm -hmm. off a trade, than to use my 10,000, which is only going to be 100 to make 200, 300, 400, right? Mm -hmm. If I lose... I still got $9,500 left of my own money. I can just buy another challenge, right? But what does that tell me? That tells me I'm not ready. So you got to go back to the drawing board. You got to educate yourself, more chart time, figure out where you went wrong, what you could do different, right? But you still have all your capital left. Mm -hmm. Now, if you went ahead and just used your 10K versus a prop firm, there goes your money. Now what? You blew your money. Yeah. Now, now You it's, blew your account. Yep. It's gone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, not only does it give you a better opportunity to make more money, it's also teaching you and helping you become a better trader. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's it's 500 books. So 
Would you rather lose 10K to realize you weren't ready yet? Or would you rather lose 500 books? Exactly. I always say that the prop, the parameters that are set in place are an invitation for you to become a better trader. To Because at the end of the day, when it comes to the, the different drawdown parameters, you should have those rules for yourself. Regardless exactly. of a prop firm. Exactly. And I feel as if a lot of traders who are getting started who are just seeing the big dollar signs and are just wanting those big dollar signs – they they skip over some steps. They skip over. You know, you need you need to have a risk management in place. I mean, I did it. Mm. I skipped over all those steps, right? Mm. And I saw a couple blues, and I thought that was God's gift to trading. Yeah. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and I learned the hard way. It wasn't like that. So yeah, like it's. I think it's very beneficial. It, I wish it was around when when I started trading. Mm -hmm. What do you see? What do you what do you teach? What are you teaching your your students inside? of of your course based off of your your experience what you've learned with obviously yes. the the skill set like the strategy itself psychology risk management i mean i'm talking about everything okay i don't leave no stones unturned and i don't fake the funk anybody who's in manifest forex knows i don't bullshit nobody i tell everybody the truth whether they want to hear it you know like it is what it is i'm not going to sit here and lie and sugarcoat things like this is not easy you know what I'm saying? It's going to take a lot from you. It's going to take, you got to rewire your brain to think a certain way. You got to control your emotions. Like as humans, we're naturally emotional creatures. Like there's a reason why nine out of 10 people fail. Mm -hmm. They can't control their emotions, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of people, like I said, you know, prop firm, why it's good. Like a lot of people that get in here and then they go, maybe, you know what? I'm going to risk my, my rent money because these guys are killing it, right? Now, every single trade you take has emotions attached to it. Mm -hmm. Because you are risking money that you can't afford to lose. You know what I mean? So yep. it's it's going to take such a toll on your mindset, on your psychology, that mm -hmm. it's just going to lead to failure. I'm Again, like I said, I'm still in the in the beginning, quote unquote. I, I consider it the beginning of my journey. And something that just recently, and I'm almost not embarrassed, but like just recently I started to think in this way. And it's elevated my trading in terms of disassociating being able to disassociate from the money win lose whatever it's not a matter of I'm sitting down and I'm marking up the charts because I want to make this amount of money today yeah. it's how can I can I best analyze where price is going to go like am, am I going to is my daily bias going to be correct and if it's not going to be correct going back to the drawing board so much so that I don't even have um I can't even see. You got to get the money out of the, uh, yeah. uh, like everybody's focused on the money. Mm -hmm. So something that I tell my students is I like to focus on percentages. Okay. I don't like to look at the money, right? Perception again, right? Let's say you pick me up today and I'm kind of in a bad mood and you're like, what happened? You lost a trade and you're like, how much did you lose? And I tell you, I lost 50,000. You're going to be like, holy shit. Yep. Like, yeah, I'd be pissed too, right? But what if I told you instead of 50,000, instead of a number, I told you I lost 1%. You're going to be like, Bro, get over it. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? You lost 1%. That's nothing. Yeah. You live to see another day. You got 99% of your account still left. Yeah. So, like, I feel like when you start getting the numbers, like, the money, like, out of your mind. Sure. It, 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 gets, it gets better. Have you always had this mindset? I didn't. I didn't. So, funny story. Um, I was walking my dog. I always walk my dog in my neighborhood, and I always see this guy. And um, he's always walking his dog. And we always, like, small talk keep it moving. And then one time he's like, Migs, like, let me ask you, what do you do? I always see you walking your dog at all different hours, like, mm. kind of like, do you even work? In other words, like, right? <laughs> yeah, what the hell are you doing? And I was, like, uh, I was like, oh, I'm a day trader. And he's like, you're lying. And I'm like, no, I'm serious. He goes, this guy was a market maker. He, for 30 years, he worked like on Wall Jeez Street. Strange. He worked in London. Like, he worked in like big, like this guy, like this is what he did for a living. And he's retired. He's been retired for some time now. That's crazy. And he's been thinking about getting into the retail side of things. Okay. So he's like, this is crazy because I've been thinking about getting into the retail side. And now I'm here, I'm here meeting a retail trader, right? And he's coming from. So we sat down to talk. And um, we sat down to talk. He wanted to pick my brain. And I wanted to pick his brain. Obviously. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know, like, this guy's on another level. Mm -hmm. Like, he worked for the banks. Like, this is who we're battling against every day. Yep. So um that's when he kind of like instilled that whole like base hits like everybody's always going for home runs and they know that right mm -hmm. it's like just go for base hits you just want to take a piece of the pie and keep it moving tomorrow's another day and just keep on there but 
one thing that he told me that really changed everything was um, treat it like a business. And it, until you do that, it's, you know, it's going to be hard for you to make it in it. And what he means by that is like everybody, you know, everybody, most of the time when you talk to people, right, and they tell you they make certain amount, like money, it's mo they're mostly talking about a year, right? Like they make six mm -hmm. figures, sure. so whatever the case may be. But in trading, like, for whatever reason, everybody's so concerned on what I'm making today, what I'm making this week, what I'm making this month, right? Nobody's looking at look at it or treating it like a business over long term, mm -hmm. right? And we're not here to make a quick buck. Like, most of us are trying to make this a career and make this last and make a life out of this. You have to start treating it like a business. Every business has its up and downs. Of course. Right? And like I said earlier, losing is a part of trading success. You have to get comfortable with losing. You're not always going to win. The same way you have winning streaks, you're going to have losing streaks. Right? So it's like if this month I make 5%, right? You say that to most traders and they're like, that's a trash month. Mm. Like 5%, right? Mm -hmm. But to an investor, if you can guarantee 20% in a year, that's, an, that's a great Incredible. return on your money. Incredible. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's 20% in a year. Yep. We have the ability to do that in a week, a month. You know, it's not going to always happen like of that, course. but you're going to have those times where it happens, right? And you're over here trying to do this in a day when there's people that if they see 20% return on their money, like they're, they're happy, they're, they're happy. ecstatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got to look at it that way. It's like, you know, this week you might be profitable. Next week might be break even. The next week you lost and that, whatever. You end up with 5% this month, next month, 10%. The next month, maybe you break even. The following month, maybe you lose 15%. Now you're back to zero and it's March. And then, you know, April comes, you lose 5%. Shit. Now you're negative 5%. Now, like some people will feel like I just wasted four months of my time. Mm. You got to keep going. Like, are you just going to give up on your business? Because it happens. It's up and down. down. Yeah. But then, you know what? Next month, you go have a 20% month. Then the following month, you have a 10% month. Then you have a 5% month. Then you have a break even. Whatever the case may be, at the end of the year, all of a sudden, you're up 60% on your money. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the possibilities are endless. Yeah. But you can't look at it in a day, day in a week. And like, mm -hmm. you know, you have to treat it as a business. Mm -hmm. And it's a long run. Do you think you'll trade for, for forever? I don't see why not. Mm. It doesn't take too much from me you know what i mean yeah. like i like my routine i you know I, i'm up at 7 30 take my kids to school walk my dog i'm on the charts at 8 30 <laughs> with the market maker <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i chat with everybody in my community <laughs> yeah. um five ten minute walk ends up being an hour mm. but um <laughs> <laughs> but i uh <laughs> But no, I work from like, I trade from like 8.30 to like 11.30. And that's my okay. window. So if I don't have an opportunity, actually going back to the prop firm, there was one rule. I like all the parameters, but there was one thing that I feel was kind of killing everybody. It was the time. Yep. It was the time. Yep. Because you had 30 days to make 10%. And if you mm -hmm. didn't, you, you failed it, right? So one thing that I tell everybody, not every day is a trading day. There's times that I sit there for three hours and my trade doesn't present itself. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to force a trade. You know what I mean? That's it. Shut the computer off. It's 1130. I haven't taken a trade. Time to go to the gym and get my day started. Tomorrow's another day. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's, I'm very strict about that. I, you know, and I always tell everybody like pick a session, pick a pair, stop jumping around from pair to pair, get to know a pair, get to know how it moves during that session, get familiar with it and you'll see things will get easier over time. So I trade from 8.30 to about 11.30. And like I said, if if by like 10.45, I haven't gotten into a trade, I'm not trading. What are you trading nowadays? GU. GU. I've been trading that for years. Only? Only, yeah. Oh. Everybody tells me, why don't you trade US 30? Oh my God, Q just made 300,000. That's great for Q. Uh, going, not, going back to our, yeah. in the beginning, good for Q. <laughs> great for Q. <laughs> yeah. But I'm comfortable with GU. This mm -hmm. is a pair that I've been trading for years now that I've got really gotten to know. Okay. Like I said, I show up to the markets every day at the same time, same time, the same time, same pair. And I'm comfortable with it. I know how it moves. You know, I, I'm, I'm very like I can pick the patterns. I can tell you I'm not going to say every time 100 percent. Of course, I still lose. But yeah, it's just course. the pay that I'm comfortable with, and it pays the bills and there I we do go. well. So why change it? Exactly. Plus, it took me a, a long time to get to where I'm at with this, mm -hmm. and it was always with GU. So to like rewire everything, you know, Why US fix it? is a, a wild. It's like super volatile. It's you know, crazy. It's crazy. So it's like I seen it. You know, don't get me wrong. I've looked at it. I've I've done some demo stuff on it. Sure. And shit, but I'm like, I'm gonna stay with GU. Like, I'm already bald. I don't. 
I don't know what else I could lose. Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to be stressed out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not trying to stress myself out. Yeah. So I, I stick to what works. Would you consider yourself intraday scalp? Intraday, intraday scalp, yeah. Normally my trades don't take more than like an hour, you know. But, you know, sometimes like, so in the beginning, I used to always fight with myself, right? Because I started off as a scalper and it started working for me. Right. And then and then from there, like intraday. But then I was always like, I wanted to swing. Mm -hmm. And yep. I kept and I wanted to swing and I wanted to swing and I need to figure it out. Right. So I would hold trades and then it would always burn me. Mm. And it would like I would just be so stressed out. Like, what am I doing wrong? Maybe it's my strategy. Maybe I had to change this. Maybe I had to change. But no, my strategy was making me money before yeah. and everything was fine. So it's not none of that. It's just you have to you have to know yourself. Right. And with swing trading, I'm a control freak. Okay. Right. So I don't even like people driving me around. Like I, I, I have to be in control of, of everything that I do. So if I know that I have a trade open, I'm not going to be able to focus. Like right now, me and you are talking and I'd be like this. And that was me all the time. Mm -hmm. Looking at my phone, seeing where the trade's at and looking at it. Sometimes I would cut it too early or I wouldn't like I wasn't I wasn't uh, trading to live. I was living to trade. Mm. You know, and I realized, like, that just wasn't me. It didn't match up with my personality. So I went back to what works. Um, and then I just accepted it. That's it. I mean, if it's not broken, don't try to fix don't it. Don't try to fix it. Right? Yeah. If, 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 if that work, That's one of the things that I love about trading is that it's – I can look at a chart and see something completely different than you see – but we can have we can still have a same the same analysis and we yeah. can end up in a W. Exactly. No matter but what works for me doesn't work for you and, and, vice, and vice versa. versa. Yeah. Man, 2018, we're we're in 2024 right now. So that's six years ago. Going. Going, going on, on six, six years, yeah. years. Did you see where you're at now and the things that you have, not only in like material things, but in terms of the community that you have, the education no. that you have? You didn't see it for you didn't see it six years ago. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't even think about it like that. I was just looking to find something to make money where I didn't have to party anymore, and I can yep. kind of like focus on family and yeah. and chill. Cause you know the the nightlife and that that life brought a lot of toxic things. So like I just wanted to distance myself. But what happened was in 2020, um, like I said, we were in a complete lockdown because of COVID. Yeah. Right. So I'm over here every day just on the charts all day and i i got i was post i got good like i started posting my profits every day and the people were just everybody's like how the hell are you doing it like how are you making this and everybody just kept hitting me up hitting me up about it so i was like you know what i got all the time in the world like why not make a course so mm. i came up with like a team and you know made this course and right away when it was for sale like a bunch of people responded everybody bought like everybody was on it so that's when i realized i'm like man and then it wasn't until like i helped somebody um that they were able to do something that they haven't been able to do in their in their life and they text me it was like thanksgiving or something and they text me like a novel mm. i'm talking about like a novel that made me tear and it was like everything on that was like it's all thanks to you this that the third and then that's when like i don't know i felt like a fulfillment that i haven't before and then that's when I kind of um like fell in love with like the whole community thing because as outgoing and social as as I am like I didn't it's a lot of work to, it to have a community and be on that and all the time be involved in the community yeah and I'm yeah. not gonna lie I wasn't always involved sure. sometimes I have my attention for a month two months sure. and then I disappear like but I have I've always had people working like I like to hire with within my you know so yeah. I have like students of mine that are now you know helping out teaching and and in the academy yeah. so that's also dope to see yeah. you know um but they're a big help because you know like i said i got other things going on in Easy. life it's hard it's hard to answer everybody and everybody's got so many questions and i was teaching for a while um and that's another thing we um it, in the pandemic when i made the course and it went well then everybody started hitting me with the do you do in person Right. Mm. And then Q was just starting to get out of doing the in-persons. Yeah. So people were looking for somebody to do it. Sure. Um, and then the problem is in Boston, I can't do it. Everything's closed. Right. So I came over here for my birthday and my brother was already here and we um, everything was open. I couldn't believe it. Like 
We were yeah. on a yacht. We were partying. Like <laughs> Florida every, was never closed. It was never closed. Florida was like, never closed. Listen, it's funny because my family saw me partying on a yacht and, and all this stuff. <laughs> and everybody, hell? oh, I heard it from my mom and from everybody. Like, you're so irresponsible. Get your ass inside. When you come over here, <laughs> you better stay in your house for like two weeks. Don't come to my house. You're yeah. not going to get us sick. Like, but, yeah. like, it was crazy. But anyway, like I told you guys earlier, my, my girl's from Miami. I met her out here. Okay. So she she didn't like Boston. She wanted to come back here. Plus, her family's from here. She's from Venezuela, so she's used to, like, the, the heat and stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, that was pushing. And then, like I said, I knew that there was opportunities out here. You know, and when I came here and I saw that everything was wide open and everybody kept asking about this in person, I just felt like everything was, like, pushing, pushing me here. But it was hard because I never thought I would leave Boston. Mm. I grew up there. You know what I'm saying? I got family there, my friends. I got so much history there. So as much as I was always traveling Miami and traveling and whatever, like this has always been my second home, but I never really thought that I would move here, like leave Boston. Mm. So would you looking, looking back in hindsight, are you happy that you moved? I am. I am. You know, there's, I, I go back often cause I got family over there and stuff. So, you know, I get to still, there's a lot of food, a lot of things sure. from over there that we don't have here that I miss. So sure. I get to indulge in those things when I go visit. But, um, I feel that it was the best move that I ever made. It opened up a lot of doors and it taught me so much. And I'm a mama's boy. So <laughs> I've always had my mom like down the street. Yeah. Like she's always lived down the street. Yeah. I wouldn't even move like more than like 10 minutes away from my mom. Like, you know, mm-hmm. so like being out here by myself with no family, it kind of um, taught me to grow up a little bit in a, a different way sure you know yeah of course uh, a lot of times i would put so much on my mom because she'd just do anything for me i'd be like hey mom can you do this i'm gonna leave yeah you know a dog with you whatever the case may be and like here it's like i got no one i gotta figure it out mm-hmm. but i don't know like it it really um i took myself out of my comfort zone and you have to do that to grow that's the only way it's the only way, and that's that's the thing. I had I was so comfortable in Boston because mm-hmm. I've been there forever, and everything was just I had it my way. So coming here it was just a big rude. It was like rude awakening, you know. But in a good way. In a good way. In a good way. In a good way, and and opened the doors. I made you know a lot of new friends out here, business partners, and opened the doors for a lot of things. So, um, but it's funny because I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I really up until I was moving, like I really had doubts. Like, am I making the right decision? I'm here talking to a realtor. And looking at houses and stuff, but but a part of me doesn't know if I'm doing the right. You know what I mean? Like, um, you'll and, never be one hundred percent certain. And I'm very big, like on signs. Okay. Right. And I look. I open social media, and and I saw this quote that said, "Leaving your hometown is a life hack." Mm. And it was, it, it's crazy and dumb as it may sound. No, I've but, seen it. I've seen that. But. That thing was the push, that little push that I needed at the moment to make the decision. Mm. I read that and it just stayed with me. And I made the decision. I came here, like I said, I became friends with a lot of other traders. I partnered up with one trader and we decided to do an in-person course together. And we went out an office at WeWork Station that fits 50 people. Mm. Never imagined that we would fill up the place And we sold it out in like an hour. And that's when I realized I made the right decision coming here. And like I said, it's just been, it's been really good, not just for trading, but just life in general. Yeah. Yeah. Trading aspirations. Since I, the question I initially asked was, did you see this for yourself six years ago? You said no. Now looking, looking forward, vision forward. What are some aspirations that do you what what are some aspirations in the trading space that you have that you're looking to accomplish? Um, well, I have a prop firm coming out. Okay. So, uh, you know, I I'm doing all my like my courses and everything for free to give back. Sure. You know, um uh, I'm I'm looking for all like other ways to help traders and to bring more light into the industry, mm-hmm. but the right way. You know, try to be as transparent as possible yeah. and help people out because I've been able to help a lot of people out. And I'm not going to lie, like those messages, they're touching. Fulfilling. Yeah, they're they're fulfilling. They're touching. Like, you know, some of these messages have made me emotional. Mm-hmm. So to think that I could have such an impact in somebody's life is, is great. You know, like before 
I was always partying and people were like, people would follow me and, and just kind of like, maybe they'd be inspired because I'm over here on a yacht and traveling and doing all this crazy stuff and cars and whatever. But I never had a way to like teach people how to live that lifestyle or how they can possibly, you know, live like that. Yeah. So now it's different um, with trading because like I said, it's something that I'm not gonna say I mastered because there is no master. You're always learning and you always sure. gotta remain a student of the game. Um, but you know, it's something that I got pretty good at and I could actually teach, um, and I can give back with that. So to me, like being able to give, um, my free course, you know, signals, all that stuff, you know, free webinars and all that stuff. It's fulfilling because I have a ton of people that have hit me up that just didn't have the money to pay for it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And now, I mean, obviously there's hundreds if not thousands of dms i wish i could find every single one of them to be like hey it's free now <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know like go back run it back yeah, yeah but even totally. i had somebody dm me yesterday um and i literally what was that they said I had somebody dm me yesterday and they were like i'm saving up to buy your course and uh i told them no need i'm like i just made it free for everyone discord everything yeah. go on wop.com slash manifest forex and um he was like super excited and that made me smile just to yeah. see, you know, how like appreciative he was. So that's um, awesome. That's yeah. I awesome. just look forward to giving back, helping people out throughout their journey makes... and, and, build, and building a team. That's right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm building a team within, you know, people who students of mine sure. uh, that I'm helping grow and, and make part of the team and kind of like let them handle all that stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, that's awesome. I want to, I, the first question I asked you, maybe I threw you off. I threw you off with it, and I asked you, "Is there anything that uh, we can help celebrate?" And I want to celebrate you. I want to celebrate your success. I want to celebrate the fact that you have found this level of fulfillment in the craft of trading and, and giving back and making your course free and having a soon-to-be prop firm to help traders gain access to capital. Like, there's lots, there's lots, there's lots to, to celebrate you for. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're you welcome. Know, in the moment, um, yeah, I just, from our conversation was everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of like, you no hit worries. me with it. But yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, uh, job's not done. We're going to keep working every day. And, you know, the goal is to just help as many people as we can. That's awesome. I feel like we could honestly talk for hours at this yeah. point. Um, but I, I appreciate you and I, I, like your authenticity, you can you can feel it. You can you can feel it when you talk. You can feel it in your energy, and I truly truly appreciate it. Thank you. Let people know where they can find you online. Um, my Instagram's Migzr M I G Z R, mm -hmm. and um, like I said, my course and everything is free on WAP.com. So W H O P slash manifest the number four X. Great, yo! If you're tuning into this interview and. You are someone who, again, is at the beginning of your journey. Maybe you're looking just to get funded. At this point in time, I want you to take advantage of all of the information that was shared during this interview, as well as if Migs is someone that you want to learn from, obviously, it's available. Reach out. Yeah. I, answer, I try to answer everybody. Okay. I'm not too Hollywood. Sure. <laughs> Not yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Migs. It was a pleasure. Um, everyone, thank you for tuning in to another top tier interview. Again, as a reminder, make sure to subscribe to our channel every single Friday, dropping new interviews, ultimately to share value and to honestly elevate the, the trading space as a whole. So Migs, thank you so much. This thank you for having great. me. Great. Bye, guys.